Iwo Jima, a barren volcanic island, lies midway between the Marianas and the Japanese homeland. Our heavy bombers attacking the Empire pass the island. The airfields at Iwo could base fighter escort for them. But the island already had strong defenses, and the Japanese were multiplying their strength. For several months, Iwo had been subjected to increasingly heavy high-altitude bombing attacks and long-range ship bombardments. By the 1st of January, there were 456 enemy installations on Iwo. Aerial reconnaissance indicated that most of these defenses were permanent, heavily protected by reinforced concrete and carefully camouflaged. For another month, we bombed the island every day, and while we bombed, the enemy built. Undismayed by another six weeks of incessant bombing, the enemy continued to build until there were 750 defensive positions on Iwo, just three days before we were scheduled to invade. On the morning of February 16th, a fire support force of six old battleships and five cruisers enclosed the island. A patrol of destroyers and APDs screened this operation, while each ship fired into its designated area at known targets. As a further protection against submarines, carrier aircraft patrolled from dawn to dark. This double screen permitted the fire support ships to operate throughout the day unmolested. The island's 750 defensive positions had been assigned serial numbers and priorities, and each ship attempted to destroy as many specific targets in its assigned area as possible. But the enemy held his fire, and there was no visible evidence of the 20,000 troops, the hundreds of mutually supporting blockhouses, pillboxes, and caves. Furthermore, to conserve limited ammunition, the fire support ships were ordered not to waste a shot by firing without effective observation. But efficient air spotting was greatly curtailed by bad weather. As a result of these unfavorable conditions, only about half of the scheduled firing was completed and little damage was inflicted on the major defenses.